April 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Judges chapter 8, from the Old Testament. The Ephraimites said to him, Why have you done such a thing to us? You did not summon us when you went to fight the Midianites. They argued vehemently with him. He said to them, Now what have I accomplished compared to you? Even Ephraim leftover grapes are better quality than Abbey Ezer's harvest. It was to you that God handed over the Midianite generals, Oreb and Zeb. What did I accomplish to rival that? When he said this, they calmed down. Now Gideon and his 300 men had crossed over the Jordan River, and even though they were exhausted, they were still chasing the Midianites. He said to the men of Succoth, Give some loaves of bread to the men who are following me, because they are exhausted. I am chasing Zeba and Zalmana, the kings of Midian. The officials of Succoth said, You have not yet overpowered Zeba and Zalmana, so why should we give bread to your army? Gideon said, Since you will not help after the Lord hand Zeba and Zalmana over to me, I will thresh your skin with desert thorns and briars. He went up from there to Penuel and made the same request. The men of Penuel responded the same way the men of Succoth had. He also threatened the men of Penuel, warning, When I return victoriously, I will tear down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmana were in Karkor with their armies. There were about 15,000 survivors from the army of the eastern peoples. 120,000 sword-wielding soldiers had been killed. Gideon went up the roads of the nomads east of Noba and Jogbaha and ambushed the surprised army. When Zeba and Zalmana ran away, Gideon chased them and captured the two Midianite kings, Zeba and Zalmana. He had surprised their entire army. Gideon, son of Joash, returned from the battle by the pass of Harris. He captured a young man from Succoth and interrogated him. The young man wrote down for him the names of Succoth's officials and city leaders, 77 men in all. He approached the men of Succoth and said, Look what I have, Zeba and Zalmanah. You insulted me, saying you have not yet overpowered Zeba and Zalmanah, so why should we give bread to your exhausted men? He seized the leaders of the city, along with some desert thorns and briars. He then threshed the men of Succoth with them. He also tore down the tower of Peniel and executed the city's men. He said to Zeba and Zalmana, Describe for me the men you killed at Tabor. They said they were like you, each one looked like a king's son. He said they were my brothers, the sons of my mother. I swear, as surely as the Lord is alive, if you had let them live, I would not kill you. He ordered Jether, his firstborn son, Come on, kill them. But Jether was too afraid to draw his sword, because he was still young. Zeba and Zalmanah said to Gideon, Come on, you strike us, for a man is judged by his strength. So Gideon killed Zeba and Zalmanah, and he took the crescent-shaped ornaments which were on the necks of their camels. The men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you, your son, and your grandson, for you have delivered us from Midian's power. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Gideon continued, I would like to make one request. Each of you give me an earring from the plunder you have taken. The Midianites had gold earrings because they were Ishmaelites. They said, We are happy to give you earrings. So they spread out a garment, and each one threw an earring from his plunder into it. The total weight of the gold earrings he requested came to 1,700 gold shekels. This was in addition to the crescent-shaped ornaments, jewelry, purple clothing worn by the Midianite kings, and the necklaces on the camels. Gideon used all this to make an ephod, which he put in his hometown of Afra. All the Israelites prostituted themselves to it by worshipping it there. It became a snare to Gideon and his family. The Israelites humiliated Midian. The Midianites' fighting spirit was broken. The land had rest for forty years during Gideon's time. Then Jeroboam, son of Joash, went home and settled down. 
Gideon fathered seventy sons through his many wives. His concubine, who lived in Shechem, also gave him a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon, son of Joash, died at a very old age and was buried in the tomb of his father, Joash, located in Ophrah of the Abizarites. After Gideon died, the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals. They made Baal Beereth their god. The Israelites did not remain true to the Lord their God, who had delivered them from all the enemies who lived around them. They did not treat the family of Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, fairly in return for all the good he had done for Israel. Oh God, here we go with the ego thing again. <sighs> Gideon started out so good. And then when he decided to go to war because his feelings were hurt instead of the good of the entirety of the nation of Israel, he was headed in the wrong direction. And then it just kind of feels like everything snowballed after that. It was amazing that he said he didn't want to be king, yet Abimelech's name actually means son of king. The ephod he made that was for the priest that wasn't for him God how many times do we get in the way of a relationship with you how many times does our ego become the God that we worship you know sometimes it's really easy and blatant to see the ego uh, and it's really easy to call it out or talk to our friends about it or even see it in ourselves when it gets to that that level but other times it's just sometimes a tone or a look or sometimes a comment said in the way it is that we intone that we are better than you somehow when I say I'm worried about something because I have a right to worry I have a right to say that you're not going to take care of stuff I have a, a right to not trust in you that's crazy <laughs> I think of some of the things that we do in justice for justice for God in defense of God in defense of Christianity really it's just defense of our own ego that our own feelings have been hurt somewhere in the process perhaps it's somebody who's rebuked us a friend who's told us to watch out for a sin that we're headed down the wrong path and our arrogance takes over at that time who do you think you are rebuking me god when will we get out of our own way and allow you to do all the amazing things you want to do in our lives when will you become the god in our life in your son's name i pray amen